Welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments, my friends. We are solving the last game, case of the game, uh, a half moonwalk, and we've collected some interesting piece of, pieces of hair from a jacket that we found in a, an abandoned warehouse at the crime scene, and now we're going to analyze take it. A closer look. And hopefully that will give us a new clue. It is not a thread, but a hair. I very much doubt that it is human. I need to compare this sample with a human hair and a horse hair. Hmm, a shaving brush is usually made from horse hair. Watson, uh, could you please pass me your shaving brush? Does he use it to Jay comb his mustache? Probably. Watson, look, what's outside the window? Well, I don't see anything. Ouch! Holmes! Oh, don't make such a fuss. One little hair. Yeah, plus you're being useful for a change, so shut up. Human hair is significantly thinner than the black sample. The horse hair is thinner than the hair that we found. So, this black hair belongs to an animal, and it is larger than a horse. A hair from a large and exotic animal. Might be an elephant. So we can make a deduction here. We can associate the fact that we found hair of an exotic animal with the wall climber, and that might make us suspect that we're dealing with an acrobat of some sorts. Um, hopefully it's not a killer clown, because that would just be creepy. But we'll find out soon enough. However, to, to gain our next clue, I believe we have to um, rule out the double murder option and select crossfire instead because everything points out that our two victims actually shot themselves um, and that afterwards they were just robbed by our potential culprit so let's see what we have here vanishing act um, so we need to find this mysterious person and apparently we need to ask Wiggins for help. So let's go back to Alf Moon Street. As always I cut out the loading screen since it was a fairly long one. So we're going to talk to Wiggins and supposedly I'd imagine he's going to look for circus that might be in town. He's always so reliable too. Wiggins, my lad, what are you doing here? You'd best be leaving and be quick about it. I've done nothing wrong. You'd learn more by watching Mr. Holmes. He knows exactly what he's doing. Not like you. Oi, watch your tongue. Man, why do you have to keep picking on the kid? I mean, his brother is in jail, in case you didn't know. I swear. Well, let's talk with him. I'm on his side. Mr. Holmes? We have good news for you, Wiggins. The investigation has proven very interesting so far. We found facts and details that confirm your brother's innocence. I knew it, Mr. Holmes. But for now, Wiggins, we need your help. Anything you like, Gov. I need you to locate a circus that has stopped over in London. It needs to have disposed of at least one exotic animal, a very large one. You can count on me, Mr. Holmes. Okay, hopefully he finds something. Again, I cut out the loading screen. Let's see what Wiggins brings us. Oh man, these loading screens have to be the worst part of the game for sure. There we go. I do hope that those children don't get into trouble, Holmes. Don't worry, Watson. I predict some news in seven seconds. Mr. Holmes, we found it. Here it is. And this is a young Indian elephant, the highlight of the show. I don't know how I feel about that. Poor elephant. Duval Brothers, a well-known traveling circus that is currently stopped in London. 
I believe that is exactly the type of circus we are looking for. I'll pay it a visit. Okay, so we're heading towards the circus now. And you know what? Watson must feel pretty bad considering that both children and dogs can do a better job than he. Right Good morning, sir. Pardon me, but why am I not allowed to walk around here? Because it's private. Well, I only wanted to meet the artists. Hmm? You're wanting to apply for... Nah. You don't look like the type of uh, artistic lockpicker that we're looking for. You might be surprised. What? Nah. I don't think so. Clear off. Jeez, don't give your entire plan away right away. <laughs> You're a very poor underling. Okay, back to Baker Street. Apparently we need to change our attire. Otherwise Lardo over there won't let us pass. So let's head inside. And let's change our outfit. Let's go with the uh, bandit outfit. And then obviously we're going to put on a fake epic beard. That would be nice. I would like to go out like this though. Farmer outfit doesn't work so we have to go with the bandit outfit. And in terms of makeup, I want a cool hat. Yeah. Going with the Abraham Lincoln look I guess won't work. Now I want, uh, maybe they won't think that I need glasses so maybe I should take the glasses off. Ah, you scoundrel, I like this look. He looks like a, a 1920s movie villain. Oh, I like this look as well, let's go with it. Hopefully it works. Stay where you are. What are you doing here and where is Sherlock Holmes? Oh God. Calm down, Watson. Take deep breaths now. It's me. Oh, thank God, Holmes. I can't get used to your disguises. Thank you, Watson. That means I am ready to go. I guess being a doctor doesn't necessarily mean you're intelligent, but oh well. Who are you? What's your name? <laughs> My name is Nigel. I'm here to open the locks. Talented, eh? Let's see. Go inside the marquee and show yourself to Charles Foley. And I'd highly advise you not to trick him. Got that? I've got it. This brute could be uh, Watson's Foley older brother. The Clearly they, s they suffer from the same uh, lack of intelligence. And I know Watson's smart, he just he doesn't show so it in this game. Is here, just as you asked. What about the money? Some of the barrels are wet. Transportation issues, it couldn't be helped. Whatever. We'll be here after midnight to pick up the supplies. I want to be paid first. No. You'll be paid after we make the transfer, as I said. Right? I hope that no one saw you. The police are on the lookout. Of course not. I'm a professional. Glad to hear it. Be ready for tonight then. Okay, well, I guess we can do a little bit of ins and a small inspection while they're talking or whatever. Let's check out the barrels. This wooden barrel is damaged. It is difficult to say what is inside. This wooden barrel. There is a spot on this barrel that was intentionally painted out. Special view mode then. Let's see what we have here. The crest of the Honorable Artillery Company. Could it be gunpowder? I need to be sure. I'm sure it is. This wooden barrel is... Judging by the fractions and the scent, I can confirm that it is, in fact, gunpowder. Someone's planning a big explosion. The barrels are roughly clustered. 
It seems as though they were brought here in a hurry. Okay, let's keep going with our inspection. This printing press is old, but still quite capable of printing hundreds of pages per day. That's a picture of a contemporary gentleman wearing a Robin Hood hat. Interesting. From lambs into lions, those are words of encouragement and defiance. This poster was clearly made to fire up rebellion amongst the people. What, so they're promoting anarchy or something? Hmm, there are enough posters to paste across half of London's walls. Powder kegs, a printing press, and a great many blank papers. All of this was stolen by the Merry Men quite recently. And these poster samples. I am quite sure it is not a coincidence. The Merry Men are planning some sort of sabotage. Oh, Stop right That's here. not good. Who are you? Are you Charles Foley? Maybe. They say that I can open any door. Do they now? We'll see that lock near the chains on a table over there. Open that. Okay, I'll try. But first let's do our character portrait. And this one should be is the last one, I think. So let's take a look. Who is armed? Armed and dangerous. Uh, so he's probably the guy with who had the jacket on and look at this He has the, a ring one of the rings uh, From the stolen antique so and he probably got that trauma from climbing over the wall So this guy was in the crime scene for sure And I guess we have to open the lock in order to progress. Let's try and make a connection here. Uh, he's holding an antique ring, which is one of the jewels that disappeared from the museum. And he's got a revolver. So all this evidence combined leads us to believe that he was the man in a jacket that climbed over the wall. So he's involved in this for sure, but now let's try and break open this lock. Let's see what we have here. Oh boy. Uh, let's turn this around and see what we have. Uh, okay. Let's start by switching that one around. This would be... Uh, Lock number two. We certainly have to match those lines up. Hmm. There's a space there that uh, doesn't have the, continu the continuation of a line. However, we might be able to move it. Let's see here. Rotate this one. We got a small window, so we got this line connected. But we need to get the lines connected on the other side as well, otherwise this won't open. Uh, where do we go from here? Let's see. Turn it all around. I need to make that uh, upper line match with the bottom line for sure. Or so I think, at least. Maybe I can move one of the switches. Yeah, I can. Okay. So we need to s move switch number two and make the lines match. So the lock should have opened now because all the lines are matching, I think. Uh, no, there, there's one line here missing, I guess. Let's turn this one around. We 
it's definitely on this side that I'm missing something. Ah, okay, wait. Progress. And now let's move this one around, see if we can get it to match. Yes. Okay, good. Oh, it should have been open by now. What's missing? Is it that line, the little line at the top? Well, if it's that, it's really annoying. Come on, turn around, let's see. And now let's turn this around and make the lines match. Hopefully, this solves it. Okay, all lines are matched up right now. So the lock should have been open. Open, not yet. Okay, we need to make these lines match as well. Man, this lock's a little bit tough. Turn around. There has to, this has to be the solution. Otherwise, I don't know what to do. Make these lines match. Hopefully this works. I'm pretty sure I had it in this position before already. So let's see. Come on. All of the lines are lined up. Oh, are you serious? I had them all lined up and I had to turn it around in order for the lock to open. Well, that's just annoying. Kind of a little bit of an annoying uh, lock oh. in this case. Well, they're right. What's your name? Nigel Shirley from York. Ah, Nigel from York. Never heard anything about you. How'd you hear about me? From your brother in jail, maybe. It's a long story. I met your brother, Vincent the Butcher Foley, in prison. He told me all about his betrayal and all about you. Before I was released, he told me that you might find a job for me one day and pay me some money for me craft. Well, he died. Seven days ago, in prison. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. That's all right. The traitor has paid the blood price for it. And you'll do the job anyway, because I need a talented look picker. I know just where to search for his legacy. It's all about the Hellenistic treasures, isn't it? Gosh, you fool. Now, listen up. You'll come with us tonight, and you better mind yourself. Us? Wait, who's coming then? Billy, Jack and me. And what will I get for that? We'll share the loot. The one you seem to know about. Right. Wait for us at the abandoned manor house on a corner of Ledbrook Grove and Kensington Park Road at midnight. Deal. Okay, so that's going to be it for this segment, my friends. The next segment is going to be our last. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Take care.